Okay, today we're going to talk about lighting a reflective object. More specifically, we're going to put a rim light on the edge of a reflective object, which is dictated by the law angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Whenever we put a rim light on the edge of a shiny object, we can't actually light the object. We light what reflects into the object. So in this case, we're going to put a black line around a white object. We're going to put a white line around a black object. So angle of incidence equals angle of reflection means that, that if we have a, a surface area that's shiny, um, and our camera's here, then we can light it forever in this direction and we'll never see what we're lighting. So I want to, to illuminate the edges of this glass, either white or black. The angle of incidence from the camera to the edge of the glass is actually going to come from behind the glass. You have to think of it in terms of a bank shot. So I flip on a light. As far as my camera is concerned, as far as my camera is concerned, this is white, but all this to my eye and maybe to the video camera is really black. But I can see out here fine, but it's more than five stops out. So if I put my glass here, is that about the right spot? Then you should be able to see a pretty black edge all the way around. Because what it's really doing is it's really picking up all the black all the way around that white spot. The further I go out, the bigger the black edge gets. The further I go in, the smaller that black edge gets. Because the angle of incidence is smaller here and it's bigger here. The further I go out, the bigger the black edge becomes. And that's being is even though I'm putting a white spot behind the glass, by moving the glass away from the wall and increasing the angle of incidence, I'm actually reflecting the black. People think you can only reflect white. You can reflect black just as easy as you can reflect white all the way around the outside edges of the glass. What we just did is we created black outlines by putting a white in the background, and, but really what was important wasn't the white. It was all the black we created around it. By making a white, everything else turned out to be black. Now we're going to create as much white as possible and just taking away a little bit of a black space around it. That would create the angle of incidence we need to reflect the white all the way around. So the way we're going to do that is I'm just going to create as much white as possible just by lighting up some white space. It really doesn't make any difference what's back here as long as it's lighter than the black void I'm creating. Then I'm just going to create a little bit of a black void, small as possible. It has to be small or the angle of incidence won't be there. And I'm just going to bring the glass away, and that should create a little black void around it. So again, what we're doing is we're not creating a black. What we're doing is creating angles of incidence for all the white that's around, around the black. If we're too close to the black, our angles of incidence will disappear. As we pull out, our angles of incidence are created, and we're reflecting white. The further I pull out, the bigger the white's going to get. So when we're shooting the glass with a white background, it's supposed to be on a white surface. Well, whatever white surface you lay down isn't going to be as white as the background. So what you're going to have to do is actually use the background as your surface. The way you're going to do that is you're going to get a reflection of the background in the surface. We, we just established how to put a rim light on shiny objects. Again, if it's a round shiny object, the reflection is going to come from the back. If it's rectangular, it's going to come from wherever the angle of incidence is. And we can always figure that by just imagining you're shooting a BB gun against that side and see where you think it would uh, ricochet and then put the light source where you think it would ricochet. And again, we're not lighting the object, we're lighting what reflects into the object. And lastly, and most importantly, we're not doing this so we can have some more uh, lit glasses. We have plenty of lit glasses in this school and in this institution. We're doing this so we can transfer this information to other kinds of lights and products. You know, I've done jewelry like this, I've done cars like this, I've done bodybuilders like this, I've done pool cues like this, I've done gun sights like this, I've done all kinds of other kinds of shiny objects like this. So you can illuminate a lot of different products using the same technique. And then how much you fill it from the front is totally up to you. It can be very mysterious and just do the outline, or you can fill it a lot if you choose. But again, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Nothing wrong with backlighting an object as long as you have a nice blocker behind it, and that will show a white outline. Or you can use a light background and show a black outline. Either one will define your object from the background.